What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So I think the market's reality is now starting to set in with three different things that are obviously affecting the markets, right? I call this the trifecta of trouble. And hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to break down exactly what's going on and Tesla absolutely getting hammered right now, even though the markets are more or less flat. I would say, I mean, the Nasdaq is still down about 42 basis points. Jerome Powell was talking a little bit at 12 p.m. Eastern and the markets really started pushing higher, you know, as soon as he started talking. And then since we have once again dropped a little bit over 1%. So markets here once again rolling right back over. And first of all, let's talk about Jerome Powell, right? Once again, coming out with the same narrative, same speech, same thing, talking about inflation being much too high. Monetary policy is not tight yet. We know that the Federal Reserve is expected to increase interest rates by one more time, 25 basis points, even though the market continues to believe that the Federal Reserve is going to pause, right? So it's either Jerome Powell that's bluffing right now that he's not going to raise rates or the market is just too naive to believe that that is going to indeed happen and the Federal Reserve is not going to raise rates. Bottom line is there is a discrepancy still. But the only uh, interesting thing that's happened in the last couple of days is that markets now expecting two rate cuts instead of three originally priced in by the market. So now we're only expecting two rate cuts going into 2024 and now settling in at four and a half, close to 4.75%. Uh, and Jerome Powell, again, and the Federal Reserve continues to be uh, somewhat neutral slash leaning more towards the hawkish side uh, and mentioning that, you know, inflation is the main battle. The main battle, the main focus is on inflation, regardless of what happens to the economy, to unemployment. That's pretty much the bottom line, because uh, when it comes to when when it comes to picking right between inflation and unemployment, what do you think the Federal Reserve is going to choose? Inflation. Absolutely. That should not be anything uh, that should not that should be a no brainer right? Nobody would need to think about it because they've been very vocal. They've been very clear on this idea that they are going to fight inflation and bring it down to 2%, regardless of what happens to the unemployment. Yes, Jerome Powell is not going to come out and say that, but we can sense it. And we already know that that's what he means. And that's why interest rates are as high as they are. And of course, a stronger labor market and a stronger economy is kind of paving the way for the Fed to keep raising interest rates. Now, going over to uh, the markets again. Now, there are Three things, as I mentioned, the trifecta of trouble, uh, the yields. Number one, we got up to, folks, we got up to as much as 4.996%. We are practically at 5% right now for the 10-year yield. And I was looking at, I was actually watching uh, one of the analysts talk at CNBC yesterday, and this is what they said. Two years ago, people were going crazy on treasuries, right? People were going People were knocking over each other to buy treasuries. Two years later, you can't even find a bid at 4.9%. You can't even find a bid at almost 5% for 10-year treasuries. That's how sentiments flipped in just a span of two years as interest rates have continued to go higher. Nobody wants to buy U.S. debt. And and yes, there are demand, right? there's auctions happening right now. There's still demand coming in. But the supply is just complete stu completely outstrips the demand. And as a result, we are now sitting at 4.97.5% uh, at the moment, hitting almost as high as 5%. That is a problem for the market because you'll notice that since April 2023, the yields are up 53% and S&P 500 during that time uh, from April has also gone higher. So there is continued divergence. We're still up 7.5%. We almost got up to over 14, 15% from those highs. And we are right now down over 6.6% um, at the moment. So that is a problem, number one. Number two, we got dollar index, DXY, continues to be pretty elevated, I would say. So since July 14th, dollar index is up 7%, 6.87%. And guess what the markets have done since July? They have consistently gone down, right? So this right here is the sell-off of 6.7% for the S&P 500 as it continues to roll over and uh, and pull back. Number three, we got oil prices. Oil prices continue to stay elevated. And once again, if you come back to June, right? So June is, we're up over 30%. Uh, at one point, we were up close to over 40% uh, for the market, for crude oil market, crude oil prices. Uh, and since then, as we know, the NASDAQ and the S&P have continued to struggle. And we've got the NASDAQ here down from highs of July uh, about 8%. We're coming back down to that support uh, at roughly 13,000 points. In fact, low for the day, 13,200. We're once again inside this green rectangle. And finally, last but not least, we got volatility. 
VIX a little bit under 20. So it has been muted most of the year. Uh, but March was the last true buying opportunity, in my opinion, got up to as much as 30 levels and since then dropped over 58%. And that is exactly what I'm preparing everyone for. Like, believe it or not, that's exactly what I mentioned in our Discord today. I sent out a message saying, be ready for when the VIX is at 30, okay? Because that will put us in the 91st percentile and something that does not happen very often. So the moment the VIX gets over 30, it's gonna be it's gonna be buying spree <laughs> in in at least in in my world it's going to be buying spree uh, and Christmas will be here if the VIX gets up to thirty so that's something that we have to pay attention to obviously and and the most important indicator as I've already mentioned is the ten year yields I think the market's really underscoring the idea that the yields are going to have a significant economic impact uh, as as they stay higher for longer it's not so much the interest rates are going higher that's a problem. It's the fact that they could stay higher is the problem. Remember that. It's not the higher interest rates. It's the idea that they could stay there for longer. If they go up there and in two weeks we're back down to sub 4% or we're back down to you know 3.7, 3.8%, nobody's going to care. Market's not going to have enough time. The economy is not going to have enough time to settle in to these higher interest rates. But the problem happens if interest rates, for example, the 10-year yields, get up to 5%. And we stay there for a prolonged period, maybe even increase up to five and a half and stay there for, for years. We're talking, you know, weeks, months. That's a problem. That's when the economy starts settling into this new reality where interest rates are higher for longer. Inflation is over 2% and stocks are in a little bit of a predicament because the higher the yields go, the higher we get pushed out on the risk curve and higher the threshold for these companies to break through for making it more attractive, so to speak, um, for us to be investing in them, right? It's all a risk reward trade-off. And I know as retail investors, right now, Tesla, Nvidia seem like the hottest stocks out there. But I can tell you from experience at the moment the 10-year yield crosses over five, five and a half, six, six and a half, the higher we go, the less appealing these names will start to become. It's just risk and reward, folks. Um, there will be a much bigger threshold for these companies to meet than we'd be expecting 14, 18, 20% per year compounded annually in order to justify taking that much risk um, so that the premium makes sense, right? Otherwise, people would just be looking at 10 year, 20 year, 30 year treasuries, maybe even shorter end of the curve. We're talking one year, two year, three year, um, and just be happy with their six, seven, eight percent per year backed by the US government. Again, that's up for debates as well, given how high the debt levels are. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed it, found it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And that is the trifecta of trouble. The yields, the dollar index, and the oil prices along with volatility. Kind of like a bonus uh, indicator there. But uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed it, found it helpful, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.